Following hot on the heels of AMD's 5th gen Ryzen 7000 series CPUs and Nvidia GeForce RTX 40 series GPUs, we are finally able to share the lowdown on Intel's 13th gen core CPUs. So keep watching to find out how these new CPUs perform and how to upgrade your existing PC or buy a next gen 3XS system with a 13th gen CPU. Now, unlike AMD, which designed a whole new platform for Ryzen 7000, Intel's 13th gen is more of an evolution from its older 12th gen. This means the new chips retain the same hybrid architecture as the older 12th gen chips comprising of two types of cores, each optimized for different tasks. These are P cores for single and lightly threaded software such as games and photo editing, and E cores for multi-threaded software such as video editing and 3D rendering. The P cores and E cores can work independently or all together, depending on what software you're running at the time, a fully automated process controlled by the thread director. However, 13th gen CPUs have clearly been taking steroids as they've got much higher specs than 12th gen. The P cores themselves have a tweak design to improve performance alongside some significant increases in cache size. For example, the P cores have 60% more level 2 cache and the E cores have double the level 3 cache. The level 3 cache that both types of cores share access to has also been expanded by 20%. And whilst each model keeps the same number of P cores, the E cores have been doubled. This means that the 13th gen i9 has 16, whilst the i7 and i5 have 8. This should significantly increase multi-threaded performance, an already strong point for 12th gen CPUs. And there are also huge increases in clock speed across the range, not to the base clocks, which aren't really anything to write home about, but to the boost clocks. For instance, the 12th gen Core i9-12900KS could boost up to 5.5 GHz, but the new 13th gen Core i9-13900K can boost to 5.8 GHz. This isn't reflected in the headline power consumption figures that Intel publishes, which remain at a highly optimistic 125 watt. So do bear that in mind when choosing a cooler and power supply. Now, like 12th gen CPUs, the 13th gen support both DDR4 and DDR5 memory, the latter getting a speed boost from 4,800 to 5,200 megahertz. The advantage to sharing so much in common with the older 12th gen processors is that 13th gen CPUs are compatible with existing Intel 600 series motherboards. And there's already a huge variety of these available in the market with four chipsets to choose from. The Z690, the H670, the B660 and the H610. That said, Intel has released a fifth chipset to tempt you, the new Z790 chipset, which only differs slightly from the Z690, swapping the mix of PCIe 4 and 3 lanes in favour of the former and adding one more USB 3.2 20 gigabits per second port. And these are pretty small differences really, and for a gaming PC, the Z690 is still a perfectly valid choice. We benchmarked the three new Intel 13th gen core CPUs up against the equivalently positioned AMD 5th gen Ryzen CPUs, plus older Intel 12th gen core CPUs and AMD 4th gen Ryzen CPUs. And to make it as fair as possible, all the systems were tested in a very similar configuration with the same cooler, graphics card, and the same amount of RAM. All the testing was conducted in Windows 11 Home with the latest drivers and BIOSes. Cinebench R23 is based on the popular modeling, animation and rendering application Cinema 4D and this test renders a complex scene on a single thread. Now, whilst you'd never deliberately choose to only render using a single thread, it is an interesting test as it reveals the raw performance difference between the various CPU architectures. An obvious standout from this graph is that the Intel Core i9 still dominates especially the new 13th gen 13900K. That said, it's only 5% faster than the 12th gen 12900KS. The next Cinebench test that we ran renders the same scene as the previous test, but now on all available threads. So it generally favors CPUs with lots of cores and threads. Two processors clearly stand out in the test. That's the Intel Core i9-13900K and the AMD Ryzen 9 7950X, with the Intel model nudging ahead by just 5%. The gen-on-gen -gen improvement when all cores are running is much more impressive than the single-thread performance increase, with a fantastic 38% speed up from the 12900KS to the 13900K. And this trend continues down the stack, with a 36% performance increase from the 12600K to the 13600K. 
Clearly, Intel's decision to increase the cache and number of cores really pays off when 3D rendering. The next test, Blender, is a popular 3D rendering application that runs on all of the CPU cores and threads. This graph shows the number of seconds taken to render the scene, so a smaller number means faster rendering. After seeing the multi-threaded Cinebench results, it's no surprise to see the Core i9-13900K and the Ryzen 9 7950X also topping this graph, although this time the Ryzen chip is just in the lead. This just goes to show how closely matched these processors are when it comes to 3D rendering. After seeing the significant increase in single-threaded rendering speeds of the new 13th gen core CPUs in Cinebench, we were keen to see how the new processors perform in games. In the first game that we benchmarked, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, all the CPUs proved to have near identical performance. As the graph shows, the performance difference in games between CPUs is marginal at best. Any one of these modern mid-range to high-end CPUs will give you brilliant gaming performance. Looked at another way, make sure you buy a good CPU, but you'll get more benefit out of upgrading the GPU as that's what really limits the frame rate in most games. Metro Exodus also showed the same pattern as Shadow of the Tomb Raider. You could read from this graph that Intel CPUs are superior for gaming, but the real takeaway is that the CPU choice really doesn't make a significant difference in many games. Spend your money on a better graphics card instead. We also benchmarked the RPG Cyberpunk 2077. With its more demanding open-world environments, this showed more of a performance difference between the various CPUs than Tomb Raider or Metro. Intel still just about managed to hold on to its performance crown, but it's a marginal lead over AMD, with not even a handful of frames per second difference between CPUs. Finally, we also benchmarked Far Cry 6. Just like Cyberpunk 2077, the open-world nature of this game puts more strain on the CPU than traditional corridor shooters. That said, the performance difference between the CPUs is still relatively small and certainly not worthy of a press release by either company. To round off the game testing, we also ran the popular synthetic benchmark 3D Mark Time Spy on all of the CPUs. Like Cyberpunk 2077 and Far Cry 6, this did show more of a difference between the CPUs than Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Metro Exodus, with the new 13th gen core processors keeping the crown for Intel. However, it's more important to note that 3D Mark is a synthetic benchmark, so it doesn't necessarily indicate how real games perform. While pretty much all the processors consume a broadly similar amount of power when idle, the peak power when running specific tasks is a very different story. For instance, despite the 13th gen CPUs having the same base power rating as their 12th gen ancestors, the new processors consume considerably more power under load. For instance, the 13900K draws 4% more power when gaming and 16% when rendering than the 12900KS. And this not only means they'll cost more to run in electricity, but there's more heat for your PC's cooling system to dissipate. Intel CPUs are not alone in this situation though. AMD's new 5th gen Ryzen 7000s also consume considerably more power than 4th gen Ryzen 5000s. The previous graph charts power consumption when 3D rendering or gaming, and this time we're looking at power efficiency, or in other words, how much performance per watt does each processor deliver. To evaluate this, we divided the Cinebench 23 rendering scores by the power draw and the average gaming frame rates by the power draw, with higher numbers indicating greater efficiency. In terms of gaming, this graph demonstrates something perhaps not readily apparent from the raw performance data shown earlier in this video, which is that 13th gen CPUs, especially the flagship Core i9-13900K, whilst fast, are not very efficient. In fact, the 13900K is less power efficient than its immediate predecessor, the 12900KS. The situation is reversed when rendering, although the 13th gen CPUs still aren't notable for their green credentials. For instance, whilst the 13900K was 5% faster than AMD's 7950X, it's actually an astonishingly 17% less power efficient. Given the fact that bills are on the rise, this makes it all the more worthwhile looking into the power efficiency of components and bearing that in mind when looking at the raw performance details. The last thing we wanted to check out for the 13th Gen Core launch was how much of a performance difference there is between DDR4 and DDR5 memory as the latter is still almost double the price of DDR4. We compared the two memory configurations using the Core i7-13700K, figuring that if you wanted a Core i9, you'd probably opt for the latest DDR5 memory. 
The DDR5 system comprised of an Asus ROG Strix Z690F gaming Wi-Fi with two 16GB DIMMs of 5600MHz Corsair Dominator Platinum running at CAS36 and the DDR4 system, an Asus TUF Z790 Plus Wi-Fi D4 with two 16GB DIMMs of 3600MHz Corsair Vengeance running at CAS18. Despite the advent of much faster DDR5 DIMMs, we still struggled to find any meaningful performance difference over DDR4, with most games reporting identical frame rates. The only exception to this was Far Cry 6, which did run 3% faster on the DDR5 system, but that's far too small a difference to be noticeable. As such, as of autumn 2022, we have no hesitation in recommending you still strongly consider DDR4 for Intel systems, as up to the Core i7-13700K at least, it makes no appreciable difference to performance. This situation may well change as the price difference between DDR4 and DDR5 narrows, especially now that AMD CPUs also support DDR5. But for now, DDR4 is still a perfectly valid choice for a 13th gen CPU. The last few years have seen fierce competition between Intel and AMD as they both strive to convince gamers and content creators that their CPUs are best. Whilst both companies now offer PCIe 5 and DDR5 support, that's where the similarities end, with each chip giant taking radically different paths. Intel's approach with its 13th gen processors has been to take the solid foundation that its 12th gen architecture provides with its innovative hybrid design and dial everything up to 11. The combination of more cores, more cache and more clock speed delivers significantly higher performance in content creation applications, albeit at the cost of considerably higher power consumption. When it comes to gaming, the benefits are marginal, although Intel would conceivably claim to make the world's fastest gaming CPUs. In reality though, Intel and AMD's latest CPUs are both great for gaming. The only thing we really wish that Intel had addressed is the lack of support for PCIe 5, NVMe, SSDs, something that AMD's 5th gen Ryzen 7000s provide. The three main new CPUs to choose from made up of the flagship Core i9, a high-end Core i7 and a mid-range Core i5. Why not let us know in the comments which CPU you're most interested in and why? And we'd also be really interested to hear whether you'd be tempted by the new Z790 chipset or would you stick with one of the existing 600 series chipsets? Follow the link in the description below to head over to the SCAN website where you can pick your CPU, motherboard, cooler and memory. Alternatively though, why not save time by buying a professionally built PC from our award-winning 3XS Systems team. They have created a huge new range of pre-configured 13th gen PCs, or they can custom build one to your preferred specifications. Get in touch with the team below using the links that we've posted there for you.